So last time, when we left off, we had a start for a inventory component and we could populate it with empty slots, but we couldn't actually add any items into those slots, which is kind of the point of an inventory. So today we're going to be doing something to both add and remove items from our inventory to actually make our inventory function. It's quite important. So on our BP inventory components, we're going to be making two new functions. The first one will be add item. And I'm also going to be making one for remove item. We'll get started with the add item first. So what we want to do here is we want to check whether or not our inventory has the item that we're trying to add already. Then we're going to check whether or not that item slot specifically has enough room to add something to the stack. If it does, it's going to add it to the stack. If it doesn't, it's going to keep looking for the next stack that it can add something to. If it goes through the entire inventory, it doesn't find the stack, then it's going to find the first empty inventory slot and it's just going to add it to that. That's the basic logic that we're going to be working with here. So we're going to need our inventory here. And with that, we'll add a uh, for each loop with break because we wanted to stop once we have found something that does what we need it to do. For our function input, we're also going to want to uh, set a BP item object reference uh, for the item to add, because we want to know what item we should be adding. So for every single inventory slot, what we're going to be doing is we're going to uh, break this structure apart and we're going to check whether or not the item we're trying to add is equal to the item that already exists in that. Now, if you want to be a little bit more uh, optimal about this, we first check whether or not there's even an item in that slot, because if there is no item in the slot to begin with, we don't need to do this comparison, um, and it can save us a negligible amount of computing power, but a theoretically existent amount of computing power. So first we're going to check, does it have an item to begin with? Uh, if it does have an item, is that item equal to the item that we're trying to add? If it is equal to the amount that we're trying to add, then we're going to need to check stack sizes. And we haven't really implemented any code or variables to deal with this on the item itself. So I'm going to open up my BP item, which is the blueprint that the data assets are based off. And I'm going to add a new uh, variable here and we'll just call this stack size and we'll set the default value to uh, yeah, 64 here. I did a little playing about before starting recording, so a lot of these values are still uh, apparently in memory. So then we check whether or not the current stack size that we have, which is the amount of items currently in this slot, is less than the amount of items of this type that are allowed to be stacked. So let's get the item to add, and there we can get the stack size. We probably should actually call this max stack size instead, just to be clear about what this value is. Is going to be used for and only if the current items in this slot are also less than the maximum amount of this type allowed in one slot so we can also make an extra branch for that only then do we add to this so at that point we get another uh, reference to our array and we simply uh, set our array element and we're going to be uh, making a structure here so uh, first and foremost we obviously want this to have an item and our new stack size is going to be equal to our current stack size uh, plus one. Now, this will only allow you to add one item at a time. So things like merging item slots is going to be a little bit more difficult. And that's honestly also going to be a little bit more complex. So maybe at some point down the line, we'll come back to this function and upgrade it to where it will be able to take in multiple items at a time. But for now, I think that this kind of suffices. The easiest way to deal with doing multiple items at a time is just running this function a set number of times rapidly after each other. It's not exactly efficient, but it'll probably do. And then the item asset to add will, of course, be our input item to add. We will set that to the array element index of whatever index our for each loop is on. So it's just overwriting a slot that already exists. And that is how we add a item, if it already existed in our inventory. Now we can simplify this a little bit uh, because now we have three branch nodes back to back to back. That's not really all that useful. So what we can do instead is we can make a end boolean node here uh, and we can just check for all three conditions at the same time. 
which is just a little bit easier to work with. If you are a Patreon or a YouTube member, you will be able to download this project file on each episode with the current progress to keep along with whatever we are doing. So that's just a little bit cleaner. And after we've added that item, uh, we're going to want to break out of our loop. And for this, I'm actually immediately going to be adding uh, rerousing nodes because uh, having lines that loop back around can be very confusing otherwise. Because otherwise it's going to keep looking for the next slot. Now, if it doesn't find anything at all here, uh, where it can add to an existing stack, at that point we're going to do a second for each loop that's going to look for an empty slot to put this in. But we need to check whether or not something succeeded here before we do that for each loop. So what we'll do is we will make a local variable. Local variables uh, are variables that only exist within the context of a function. Uh, so has found slots, we'll call this. And every time we run this function, this variable is going to have a fresh value of whatever you set the default to, in this case, false. So if we find something, uh, we're going to set this has found slot to being true so that we know that we have found the slot and we've done the thing. So we don't need to do the next for each loop. So after we complete this for each loop, what we'll do is we'll put in a uh, branching node here and we'll check whether or not the slot has been found to begin with. If that is true, we can simply add a return node to end this function and we'll return uh, the value of has found slot. That way, when we run this function, we'll also be able to uh, tell whether or not something was added to the inventory or not, because if the inventory was full, uh, it's not going to add anything, but it could be useful to have that information to display to the player like, hey, your inventory is full. Stop trying to add things. Now, if it hasn't already found the slot, we're going to check whether or not we want to maybe get a empty slot. So we're going to do another for each loop over the inventory. We're going to, again, break this structure and this time we're just going to be checking has item so we'll check that and if has item is false then we just add one to that slot so there's a lot of checking of other stuff here that doesn't matter if has item is false there's nothing in that slot and we can simply set whatever um, we want in that slot without doing any more checks so we can just copy over the set array element here we can copy over the make structure inventory slot as well Put that into the set array element. Uh, we're going to set this to has item being true. Uh, the stack size is always going to be one if we add it through this method because we're looking for an empty slot. And when we're adding something to an empty slot, we're always going to have one of that item. And again, the item asset will be whatever our input was in our function here. And we'll only run this again if this branch is false. And then once again, we're going to be setting has found slot to being uh, true because we've now found a slot to put this thing in. And after that, we're going to break this for each loop because again, otherwise it will start adding uh, it to every empty slot. And we only wanted to add it to the first empty slot that we have. And once that has been completed, uh, we add a return node again. And that return node is just going to return the value of has found slots. Do be sure to hook up the set array element index uh, to the array index of the for each loop for the second one as well. Uh, if you don't do that, you run into an issue where it just keeps overriding the first slot of your inventory. This is the function for adding items to our inventory system. Now, this is a little much. If we're going to remove items, uh, it's going to be much, much easier. Because what we do when we want to remove a item we can do this in a couple of different ways. We can also try to uh, remove an item uh, based on the item itself and do something similar that we did for adding items that has its merits. Uh, for the most part, what I prefer to do is, since we already have all of the information in our inventory, we just need to look up what item slot that we're referring to and just remove one from that item slot. So when you have an array, what you can do is you can just find an item and uh, we can just pass in the item to find and this will just find the array index that is equal to whatever structure we put in here so if we already have access to our inventory anyway and we're selecting hey this inventory slot we want to remove an item from it we can just pass that into uh, this find function and save ourselves a lot of headache so after we found that we can uh, get a reference to it 
this is quite relevant that we want to get a reference and not a copy because if we make a copy we're going to not actually change the inventory slot you want to directly have a reference and in that reference what we're going to do we'll check whether or not the stack size is greater than one because if it is greater than one we're just going to subtract one from it if it is one we're going to remove the item from the inventory altogether so we'll check whether or not this is greater than one and we'll do that in a branching node and that's actually the first execution pin that we have here if it is greater than one all that we need to do is get this stack size and say hey decrement integer and that will do what it needs to do if it is not greater than one which means that it is one or less than one if you somehow glitched the game uh we're not going to worry about that for the time being uh what we'll just do is we will uh set by reference variable and then we're going to be making a new structure that we're going to set the uh, value as which we also need to do for the uh, decrementing int in a moment uh, but we just want to set this to having no items having no stack size and having no item reference at all and for the true version of this what we want to do is we want to have it as an item we want to set it to its new stack size and we want to uh, take out the item asset that we already had and the reference that we're setting is going to be the thing that we got from the get reference node so what we're doing here is we have the inventory we find the index we get the uh, reference and then we're setting that reference again with new value uh, so this is how you set up the simple setup for removing items from the inventory it's actually quite simple and then in both cases uh, we're just going to put this into a return node as well and here we don't really need to return a bool whether or not it was successful removing the item from the inventory because removing the item from the inventory is probably always going to be a success now, for testing purposes, we want to test whether or not this works, but we don't have any code to add items to the inventory yet. Uh, we'll do that in the next video. For now, we're just going to make a new extra function, and we'll just call this something like add rock, uh, and we'll simply run the add item function that we have here, and we will just add a item rock. And we'll make this call in editor. So we can just press the button in editor a lot until we get to a point where... Uh, we start filling up our inventory entirely with rocks. Now, if we run this, we can go into our inventory component. Now we have add rock and inventory constructor. We need to construct the inventory first. I will open up a couple of item slots here. And if I add a rock, you can see the first slot now has an item, stack size one, item rock, and I can keep adding rocks to it. And we can go up and up and up and up and up and up until our stack size is entirely full. And now we can see we are approaching a full inventory slot and we've got a full inventory slot. If I add one more now, it should start populating the next inventory slot and it does. So we have a functioning inventory slot system. There's still a lot of work to be done. Uh, next time we're going to make a little bit of a simpler video on actually picking up items and I'll probably throw in a little bit of a bonus. I will also make a chest that can uh, drop items in the world or something like that. And after that, we finally are going to get to implementing this in a UI. Because at this point, we still don't have any UI for this. This is all just on a technical level, like the code works, but players need to be able to interact with it. So, still a lot of work to do, but for now, if you want this project file with everything up until now, working as it is, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon and for YouTube members to download it, and you also are supporting the channel if you do that. So, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you back next time with some more cool stuff. And for the full course, if you're watching this in the future, it should be all up on the YouTube channel already. But if you're watching this shortly after it was uploaded, there will be a link down below in the description to the Patreon where you can find the full course, plus a little bonus episode where we go over and change some things to make some alternative ways to interact with the inventory, which will be a Patreon-exclusive episode. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier Patreons, Sergey Thomas, 